Hola, bienvenidos a Tina Spanish Cafe. This is where we combine a little bit of conversation, a little bit of cafecito, and some Spanish lessons. I love cafecito. Cafecito is meant to be enjoyed and not rushed. You know, there are a lot of those modern espresso makers but I still love my Greca. I love it when the pressure builds up and it pushes through the coffee, the cafe, and then the aroma just fills the room. Cafecito, dos cucharaditas de azúcar parda, two teaspoons of, I like the raw sugar, raw brown sugar. Enjoy this fruta. But we're also here to learn Spanish. The lesson for today is ser and estar. It seems like these two verbs cause a lot of anxiety for uh, English speakers. The reason is that they can both be translated as to be in English, but they're not interchangeable. Each is used for different situations. We're going to take ser first. You use ser, the very first situation, in fact, get a pencil and a piece of paper and take notes. Let's go. You use ser, the very first situation, is to describe, you, to describe a person, a place, or a thing. Physical description as well as inherent uh, qualities or personality traits. Physical description, la muchacha es guapa. El profesor es alto. Yo soy baja. Inherent quality, uh, mi mamá es tímida. Eh, mi papá es serio. So physical or temporary physical conditions or description and uh, permanent or inherent qualities. The second uh, situation for ser is for either profession or occupation. Yo soy profesora. Eh, mi esposo es médico. Nosotros somos alumnos. Occupation or profession. The next um, situation for ser is nationality. Nosotros somos americanos. Eh, mi papá es dominicano. Los niños son argentinos. The fourth situation and I'm just giving you the main situations. So the fourth one that I'm going to give you today is origin. Where a person is from. Yo soy de Miami. Eh, mi mamá es de Puerto Rico. Eh, los niños son de Uruguay. So to recap, said description physical description, and inherent or permanent qualities, profession and occupation, nationality, and place of origin. Let's take a start. I'm going to uh, mention two main situations for a start. A temporary condition or situation. A Yo estoy nerviosa. Yo estoy nerviosa porque estoy en la televisión. I am nervous because I am on TV. It's a temporary condition. It's not like I'm a nervous person by nature. In that case, I would say, yo soy nerviosa. Yo estoy nerviosa due to a specific situation. Um, la niña está tímida. 
The girl is shy. Está tímida porque eh, está, es su primer día de la escuela. She's, she's shy because it's her first day of school. It's not that she's shy by nature. It's a temporary condition. The second situation, main situation for is that is location. El café está en la bandeja. Yo estoy en mi oficina. Eh, mi papá está en Nueva York. Location. Anytime you're going to talk about location, you need to use estar. Uh, los alumnos están en la escuela. Now, those are the situations. We have to remember that we use the correct form of each verb. That's when conjugation comes in. Conjugation is just a big word that means that each subject takes its own uh, ending of the verb. We do the same thing in English with the verb to be. It's to be, but if it's, if it's, uh, if it's I, you say I am. You don't say I be. Same thing in Spanish. Each subject takes its own form. Let's move over to the board and I'll show you that. Here's my marker. We'll start with say. Before we conjugate it, before each subject takes its own form, it is called the infinitive. So if you want to say, to use the word to be, then you use say. But if you're going to have a subject, then each subject, as I've been saying, takes its own form. So if the subject is yo, the, form, the correct form of yo is soy. Yo soy profesora. If the subject is tú, the correct form is eres. Tú eres guapa. If the subject is él, ella, and usted, usted also means you. It's the form used for uh, people in authority. And, uh, and people that you don't know very well. The correct form here is es. Él es médico. Él es serio. The next subject is nosotros. Now these next three are the plural forms. Nosotros, we. Nosotros somos. Nosotros somos alumnos. Nosotros somos inteligentes. Nosotros somos eh, profesores. The next one, ustedes. Ustedes is the plural form of you in Spanish. Uh, in English, I guess we say you are or you guys. Ustedes son. Ustedes son eh, alumnos. Ustedes son eh, médicos. And uh, finally, ellos and ellas. Ellos is the masculine form of they, and ellas the feminine form of they. It means they, you're not included there. They, those people over there, son. Ellos son. Should we move over to estar? Estar in its basic form. In the infinitive form is estar. To conjugate again is when each subject here takes its own form. For yo estoy. Yo estoy en la escuela. Yo estoy eh, nerviosa porque tengo un examen. I'm nervous because I have a test. It is your temporary condition or state of being. Él, ella, and usted, these three forms, these three subjects, object pronouns here, take esta. 
Nosotros estamos. Nosotros estamos en el salón de clase. Nosotros estamos eh, en Miami. Location in that case. Ustedes, again, ustedes means is the plural form of tú. You guys. Ustedes están. Ustedes están nerviosos porque hoy hay un examen. You guys are nervous because today there is a test. Temporary condition in this case. Ellos y ellas están. For those of you that uh, want to learn more in-depth grammar, every form of uh, estar, except for the yo form and the nosotros form, has an accent mark. Tu estás, está, están, and está. That was easy. Nothing to be nervous about, nothing to be anxious over, ser y estar, after today, your Spanish will flow easier, your Spanish will sound better, and uh, hasta la próxima.